guys. I have started the recording, so we will. Uh, anything you say now will be put on the on the uh, recording and will be available in the shop. So don't say anything you don't wish to have heard again. <laughs> Got it. Okay, just a little recap from last week. Um, here is the project that we're making. We're making a uh, hanging wall cabinet, and um, we have the two sides the top and the bottom and the middle shelf. And then here kind of highlights the face frame and then the door, which will make in week four and five, we'll build the door and mount the door before we actually put the finish on. Okay, so last week we cut out our two sides. So we have the right and the left. Then we cut out our shelf to fit in the middle. And then we cut out our top and bottom. To These are to final size. Now, Ron Sanzone last week asked a great question of how do I know that these are square? Well, what I like to use is just a little bench hook that catches on the uh, edge of my bench. So I'll show you this is just like a 12 inch square piece of plywood with a scrap that's square with this edge. And then I go across this edge and that hooks on the edge of my bench is why they call it a bench hook. And let me show you, I use this for a couple of different processes during the uh, during the build. So I have went already and squared up the left side, top and bottom. The right side, I have squared the top, but I have not squared the bottom. And I did not on purpose because I wanted to show you how we score up the edge of this board. So I'm gonna take my plane, if I keep all the parts together here. breaker come out okay so I'm gonna set the edge of my board that I want to trim true flush with the edge of my bench hook and then I'm gonna set my plane flat on my bench and I'm gonna butt it up against my board okay and I can look at this until I have between a 32nd and a 64th of an inch gap on this side where I'm flush on this side. So what I wanna do is I wanna keep pressure against my board to keep it uh, tight against my fence here. And I'm just gonna take my, I'm just gonna take my plane and I'm gonna keep it flush with the edge by pushing down on this against the board. So what I'm doing is I'm shaving this end that's high and I'm going to make it level with this end that's where I have the slight gap. Again, I don't have to take a lot off. It's just ever so slight, but this makes sure that everything is exactly square. Okay, and that is all it takes. So I'm gonna come up here to the light. And I'm gonna come in here and show you, okay, that there is no gap underneath my square with the edge of the board. It, it, <clears throat> so, um, so you can see that I now have uh, both stop square on both ends, okay? 
So what I'm going to have to do next is I want to kind of put this together to make sure that I'm good. To make sure my shelf fits. Now, don't forget last week we did the rabbit. We did the rabbit. Is he okay? We did the rabbit for the shelf on the inside of the uh, two sides. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test fit this. I'm going to put my side that I that I squared flush right here. What's that? It looks like a nice tight fit. Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. So this is our two sides and our shelf. So you can see the fit, okay? And again, I snuck up on that fit, dependent on the thickness of the shelf that I'm putting in. Now, you'll notice that this side Rail, this side rail is a little higher than this side, but yet I'm almost flush back here. So before I glue this up, I'm going to come back with my plane and I'm going to make this edge level with my shelf because I don't want that raised um, any higher than my shelf before I go to glue up this uh, project. So we're going to leave this here. So everybody can uh, see that. Is that in the way? Okay. So now we're going to work on our top and bottom. Okay. Can you see? Okay. So you can't really see it too much, but I have a little bit of rock there. And I have a lot of rock here. Okay. So what I need to do is, I need to true this outside surface up before I think about building the rest of the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my bench hook again, okay? And my material thickness, my material thickness for my hook is three quarters of an inch. And this is three quarters of an inch also, or a little bit proud of three quarters of an inch. So if I go to take the plane and take this off and make this square, I'm gonna run into my bench hook. So how do we solve that? Any suggestions? A little okay. shim. There you go, exactly. So I'm gonna take an eighth inch shim and I'm gonna raise my material off my bench hook on my shim, okay? And I'm just going to take my plane. It's not a very deep cut. Maybe back that out a little bit. We got some background piano music for dramatic effect. Right? 
Roy Underhill doesn't even have this. That's right. Well, look at those nice shavings coming up here. Okay. Getting close. Getting close. So a little more up the middle. I keep going back to check it. A little more. Okay, I'm good on this end, but I still have a high spot down here. So I'm gonna come back. I'm okay on this end, but I have material to take away here to make it square, to make it flat. Okay. You can see I don't have any gaps. I think we're good. So that is my top. That's the outside surface of my top. Now I'm going to go to my bottom. Okay, this one's way out. This may take a minute. We'll get to it. Again, I'm using my number 62 low angle jack plane to go ahead and take this off and start to true this up. Man, is it hot today. Okay, I'm not bad on this end, but I'm still way off on this end. So I need to take a lot off here and just a little bit right here. Okay, I'm getting closer there. And I'm high in the middle on this side. High in the middle here too. So I just need to come straight down the middle and I think we'll dial it in. I know this is like watching grass grow out in your backyard, but it's important to understand the technique of this, how to get it surfaced with the hand plane, which is so much simpler than a joiner, to be honest. A little bit more down the middle and we'll be good. Again, all these tools we have in the shop, so feel free to come in and try this project in the shop when we get back open. Which the leadership is working on right now. Doug, do we have one of those boards in the shop? 
we don't have one of these, but I'm making one at home. And by the time we open up, I'll have a board, a shooting board. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't board. look too complex to uh, It is not. To make it is all. not. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, it's not. And I will have one before we uh, open up. Okay, I am good on this side. I'm not quite good on this side. I still have a little bit more in here. But I'm getting really close. Again, this is the pleasure of hand tools, of how easy you can control the whole process. Hand tools are therapeutic. If you're stressed out from a hard day at work or, you know, kids driving you crazy or, you know, even a long-haired mess cook is driving you crazy, come on out, grab your plane, and that's therapy. Okay, there we go. We're good. So now we have a flat top and bottom. And now what we need to do, go back to our drawing real quick and reference our drawing, <clears throat> is we need to make these joints right here so the side panels will fit into the top and bottom. So these are not through rabbits. They're called stopped dados. So we're going to use two different methods. We're going to use the mechanical method uh, for expediency, and then we're going to use a strictly hand tool method. So I'm going to demo the um, mechanical portion first. And what I've done is I've laid out the outside of my line that I want for my stop dado. Uh, one more important measurement we have to do is, so these dados go from the back to the front. So I have to measure the width of my side panel, which is five and a quarter inches, and that's how long I want my stopped dado. So I'm going to come and measure five and a quarter inches. And this is where my stop data was going to end right here. We're using a round three quarter, we're using a three quarter inch diameter straight bit in a quarter inch trim router. I got mine from uh, Home Depot for under $100. And it does a lot of small utilitarian work like this right here. Okay, so this is going to be five and a quarter from here to here. And then we're going to have three quarters of an inch for the uh, face frame and then for the inset for the door. So you'll see this more as we go along. But we're gonna go ahead and make our stop dados. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set this fence offset. Let me show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm using the width of this router base plate as a reference for my fence. So I'm gonna go from the outside edge of this bit, and then I'm gonna set my fence up so I have a nice three quarter inch cut all the way across through my stop dado. I'm gonna check my width, make sure I'm okay. And then once I verify my width, I'm gonna make sure I'm square. So I'm gonna set my square down and I'm gonna make this fence square. And then I'm gonna clamp it down.
careful so I don't adjust my depth. I'm going to go back and make sure I'm still square. I'm going to go back and make sure that my width is where I want it. I'm looking at my bit and I'm lining the edge up with my fence and I'm checking to make sure that the outer side of the bit is following my line so I can get a good uh, stop point. Okay. Now, gonna be a little noisy here. Bear with me. One of the biggest mistakes people make with the router, especially ham router is, they try to go too fast. Slow down, let the tool work for you. Don't work the tool, okay? And besides hurrying up, you're gonna burn the bit. And it's just gonna make it that much harder to uh, do. So I'm gonna orient myself. So I'm gonna turn on the router. I'm gonna make sure that my fence, my base plate is with my fence. Whoop, oh, I turned off the switch, sorry. Okay, so now I have a stop dado for my side panel to actually recess into my bottom piece right here, okay? I know that this is gonna be the right fit right there, so you can see how that is just gonna go in with a little tap, that whole thing is gonna set in right there. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna square up this corner so my piece can fit up flush where it's supposed to be. And for that, I'm gonna use my chisel, my bench chisel. Okay, and I like to score with my marking knife, the area that I'm gonna lay out. Let's fasten it down first. So it doesn't move around on us. I'm gonna take my square and my marking knife and I'm gonna score the fibers of the wood that I'm gonna chisel out. I'm not gonna take it all at once. I'm gonna come back and forth and take small segments. I'm not gonna take it all at one time. I'm gonna take it down to the very bottom of my dado to make sure that everything is flush and I can fit my side panel all the way to the front. Really easy to do in this pine too. Bad thing about pine is it does it does chip out pretty bad. So if you were going to make one of these for yourself at home, um, oak, cherry, walnut would be a good choice of woods.
How deep of a dado are you comfortable with making in one pass? Um, that's a great question. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I wanted to bring up a point of the dado depth. So I went ahead and took my measurements off my drawings and this is three eighths of an inch deep dado. Okay. Now that you, to answer your question, it would depend on the species of wood that I'm going to use. Okay. You can see here that I don't have a lot of tear out. I don't have a lot of burn marks because pine is very soft. If I was doing this in oak or walnut or even cherry, because cherry burns very badly with the router bit this wide, I would take a quarter inch pass or maybe a 3 16 pass and then I would go back and do the other half. Now what I did was I took a scrap piece of this and I adjusted my depth of my dado before I even uh, did my final my cuts here. So before the show started I went ahead and adjusted my depth of my router bit to three eighths of an inch just for expediency for tonight. So to answer your question, I'm comfortable with doing a 3 8 cut on pine, but if I was doing walnut or ash or oak, um, I would do half of that 3 16 and then go back and do the final 3 16 on the second pass. Did so, I answer your question? Uh, yeah, I got one. What, what defines the depth of the dado? Is it like one third of the thickness of material or depends upon the species? You know, it, um, a little bit depends on the species. You have to take that into consideration, but it depends on the uh, the structure that you're making the dado for. In other words, how much strength is, is this dado going to rely on? This is mostly for aesthetic, but um, it does hold up both of your side panels. So it's going to hold up a lot of the uh, structural um, tweaking or uh, racking of the two side panels in order to keep the face frame uh, true and the door true when we go to hang the door. That's a great yeah. question though. So okay. you can, you know, some dados, you, you know, you only have to may maybe make an eighth or a quarter of an inch, you know. Um, it, the, it, this one, the half of the width or half of the thickness of the board is more than enough for what we're trying to do. And what we're really trying to do is capture these two side pieces inside my top and my bottom. So nothing racks from side to side. When I go to put the face frame on, when I go to hang the door, and when I go to hang it on the wall, repetitive opening and closing of that door to access the inside, this will make sure everything stays taut and square. Got it, thank you. Yes, great question, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to um, come and do the other side. I'm going to go back in five and a quarter for the depth of my dado. And then I'm going to unplug my router because I want to be safe when I'm handling my router. And then I'm going to adjust my fence like I did before. I'm going to take the outside diameter of that. And I'm going to roughly square it. I'm still right there, still right there. I'm going to hold this in place. Okay, now I'm making sure that this is still square and it wasn't, so I'm making this square before I tighten it down. 
And when I say square, I'm going from the back edge of the board straight down to make my dado square with the side, with the back edge. Then I'm gonna check my width to make sure I'm still good on my width. Okay. That looks good right there. So I am ready to go ahead and cut my dado again. Okay. Yeah. So that was my second cut of my dado. And I'm going to go back, same thing. I'm going to square it up with my half inch chisel. I'm a big fan of marking knives because it scores the fiber of the wood to give you a true cut. But you have to remember the marking knife is only flat on one side. So you have to go back. And alternate sides against the, uh, the uh, square. So we're talking a little bit about hand tools here. Um, if you don't know, we have a hand tool SIG that we hold every other Saturday. If you go on the, the YouTube website, Paul Duffield is a hand tool guru, and he's given us some great tips on how to use our hand tools, how to sharpen them, how to maintain them. So if you would follow him, you would complement what we talk about here on our hand tool use. I ended up watching it this past Saturday and it cost me $200 because I bought everything he suggested. What'd you buy, Doug? The uh, greatest uh, Mark II honing guide and the uh, diamond plate. Yeah, the Dura Sharp uh, diamond, diamond plate. A lapping stone. Or you buy a yes. A lapping stone or a lapping diamond? Yes, lapping diamond. Thank you. That was at about 125. Um, it wasn't bad. It was 85, 86 dollars. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I expected more. Yeah. So, given that uh, you know, I want to maintain my tools better, I think it was worth it. I think what you'll find is when you start using hand tools, it won't totally replace your machine tools, but you'll find ways to complement your work with hand tools that where hand tools can be easier to use and you have more control over certain scenarios. Just like this uh, stop dado, you know, you couldn't do this without a chisel. You really couldn't. Okay, 
So you can see here, we have our two stop dados. And our two sides are gonna fit right inside of this. So this is the top, I'm sorry, this is the bottom. So our project is actually gonna fit right down inside of here. And when we get all the data is done, well, let's not wait. Okay, there you go. We have to go forward a little bit. Okay, so there you can see our stop dados. Our sides come right up to our stop data that we made. And everything is starting to come together. How about that? Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing for the top. So I'm going to make one cut mechanical, and then we're gonna talk about how we're gonna do a cut with, uh, with hand tools. Again, I'm gonna measure five and a quarter. How are we doing for time? What time is it? Make sure I'm unplugged. I'm still square. Okay, I'm square, tighten it up. Check my square again to make sure I didn't go out of square. Check my width, I'm good. Plug in my router again. <clears throat> Get everything out of the way.
Okay, I'm done with the trim router. I'll get that out of the way. We'll go ahead and square up our corners again. All right, so now we're gonna come over and we're gonna lay out our dado, stop dado for our final side. We're gonna measure over three quarters of an inch because that's the width of our material. We're gonna use our square to lay out our line. Then we're going to come back with our marking knife and score that same line. And you don't want to go too far past the end of your stop dado because you're, you are cutting the, the fibers of the wood and you don't want to have to go back and sand down to where your cut mark is. So try not to get too crazy on the scoring of the wood. Okay, so I'm gonna clamp this down again so I don't move around. Now I'm gonna take my wider chisel, I'm gonna take my one inch chisel and I'm gonna go into that score mark where my knife was and I'm gonna define the shoulders as I go. I'm not gonna to try to go too deep. I'm just trying to score with the chisel right now to get a good reference line. Try to hold. I'm sorry, is it just me or do we not hear Doug anymore? Can't hear him. Me, me too. Uh, he's gone okay. quiet. Hey, Doug, we can't hear you. And he can't hear us. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got that headphone shut off. Oh. How, anybody know hand signals? <laughs> I, I, I like what Paul is doing. <laughs> everybody do it. Let's open up our cameras and everybody wave.
Okay, I think he knows that there's a problem. Okay, good. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry guys. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we can we can hear you. Thanks, Doug. Okay, so what I did was I took my one inch chisel and I scored all around my dado as a starting point. Now I'm going to take my router plane. Okay, I'm going to set it about three thirty seconds of an inch deep for a cut. I'm going to slowly start chipping away. It's a little aggressive cut there. Hang on. One snap for the first time for the first pass. You don't want to go too deep in the first pass. You're just looking to define the dado to start with. Again, what's nice about a router plane is you're going to get a square corner really easy without going back with the chisel because this is essentially a chisel that's just 90 degrees. <clears throat> Then I would go back, adjust my depth down another little bit, about a 16th or 330 seconds. Not enough. Each pass, it gets a little easier. <clears throat> okay, here's an important part. You have to keep go back with your chisel and redefine your border of your dado as you go along. And now you have a lip chisel up against and it's so much quicker.
Again, you want to pull your chisel into the wood and not come out so you don't split the back side of the wood. Okay, so that's the gist of what we're trying to do. I'll continue to do this uh, as we go along. Um, are there, so are there any questions about what we've done so far tonight? So we're really close to um, having our case done. So for this week, uh, we have rabbited the uh, made a stopped dado on the top and bottom, and we have fit the middle shelf into our two sides. And we now know that our two sides are to the right dimension to fit the uh, bottom and the top. Okay, for next week, we are going to put a slight contour, just a 45 degree angle to break this edge here all the way around on the top of this and then on the bottom of the top piece. So just to kind of break the edge to give it a little more detail. So when it fits on here, we're going to put a 45 degree, an eighth inch 45 degree bevel right here just to kind of break this up. Then we're going to plane everything flush with the back. And then we're going to glue the case up for next week. And then we're going to start cutting uh, parts out for our face frame. So our face frame is one inch wide. It'll be two rails and two styles. Rails, styles, as we go. And we're going to fasten those with a half lap joint. And we should get most of the face frame done next week. And then for week four, we will attach the face frame to our case. And um, then we'll start to rough out the parts for the door. So week four and five, the second half of part four and all of five will be spent making the door. And then for week six, we will attach the back of the cabinet and then um, we'll talk about finishes. So what I'd like to know is think about this for this week and let me know next week what color you guys want to paint this. So typically on um, pine like this, we paint it with uh, milk paint, something along those lines. So be thinking about what color of milk paint you want to paint this with. Um, we are going to have a veneer panel on the top. We are going to use a piece of uh, veneer for this top. And here we're going to use a shiplap, uh, uh, shiplap inserts here for this uh, appearance here also for the door. OK? So be thinking about what color you want to do this. Hey, Doug, are you sure you really want to trust us with such a big decision? You know, <laughs> um, I'm sure we'll have to have a survey of some sort to have this uh, go around but uh, straw pull yeah I, i'm sure travis you could pull this off I, i'm gonna try hard doug thank you <laughs> yes sir yes sir so thank you for your questions on, on the, what we've done this week is it interesting is it uh oh my gosh you know uh this is too easy there's a mixed group of people out here and i'm trying to reach a lot of the entry level folks so for you advanced guys I'm uh, sorry this may not be as interesting as some of the other topics, but it's always good to review the basics. It really is. That's all good. And the audio was you know, much improved with the headset. So okay. again, thanks for that. Okay. I'll talk to my producer and make sure that he recharges his unit before we start <laughs> next time. <laughs> Too much time on Twitch uh, runs his battery down. Okay, folks, any other questions? Thanks, Doug. Okay. Hey, Thanks Mark. very much, Doug. Have a good night. Thank you. We'll Thank see you. you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Be here. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys.